Waverley. Thank you, Acting Speaker. And I rise to speak on the Appropriation Bill 2019, and I do so with great pride in knowing that the Andrews Labor Government is delivering for all Victorians. We are delivering on all our promises. Uh, we promised on education, we're delivering on jobs, we're delivering on transport and delivering. Did I mention jobs? Lowest rate ever. Thank you very much. Almost full employment. I mean, it's, it's excellent. And uh, delivering for all our community. Uh, I want to acknowledge the work that the Treasurer, Assistant Treasurer, um, the Parsec to Treasury, uh, and the Premier, of course, are doing on this budget and the whole government. Working together, we're delivering for the people of Victoria just as they elected us to do. So I congratulate Tredra on delivering his fifth consecutive surplus budget, and Victoria is definitely in good hands. Now, I'll talk about education. Talking about giving our kids the best, I'm proud to speak on a budget that is delivering on all its promises to the people of Mount Waverley and more. This is a budget about delivering especially for education, which is my highest priority for the people of Mount Waverley. This budget has a high focus on education, covering from three-year-old kinder right through to free TAFE. In my inaugural speech, I made a promise to my constituents, and I promised that as long as I am here, education will be my number one priority. Just as the Andrews Labor government stands by its promises, I do too, and we are the education state. My electorate of Mount Waverley District is known for its quality public schools, something that my constituents and I take great pride in. As I met with local schools in 2018 during my campaign, I saw firsthand our government schools are something, as I've said before, a victim of their own success. Funding for facility upgrades and expansions is needed, and as they struggle to keep up with the high demand for enrolments that has come about from people moving into our area to send their kids to these great schools. I know that's why I'm in a great electorate, and nine years ago my wife and I chose Mount Waver to call our home because it's a great district to live and a great place to raise our three kids. So in my campaign travels, one school that certainly stood out as in need of support from the Andrews Labor government was Brentwood Secondary College. It's a great school which delivers a very high level of education to its students, but it's relocatable buildings uh, buckling under the pressure of ever-rising student enrolments. Those from our area would also be aware that Brentwood was the location of a fire in one of these relocatables earlier this year, damaging two of their portables in their VCE centre. Well, the good news is for Brentwood and the students and the parents and the staff and everyone else in the community is that Labor is delivering on its promises for better education with a commitment of $4.6 million, thank you very much, to make sure that the students of Brentwood Secondary College have the learning spaces they deserve by delivering a completely rebuilt VCE centre. So since being elected in November last year, I've been a strong advocate of this fantastic school and I'd like to give a quick shout out and thank you to the Minister for Education for visiting Brentwood with me to help announce this funding initiative to this school. Thank you also to the Principal John Baller for his warm welcome and for showing me and the Minister around the school. We met with some of the hard-working VCE students at Brentwood, as well as viewing the buildings to be replaced. I would like to give a special thanks to the Brentwood School Captains, Cindy Tran, Jake Hume, Michael Alapides, Rochelle Dixon, for assisting us in showing us your wonderful school, and I wish you all the best in your final year of VCE. Now, something Brentwood Secondary and I have in common is we're both celebrating our 50th year. Earlier this year, we celebrated this milestone with a notable alumni of the school and a previous member for Mount Waverley, the Honourable Maxine Morand. And I hope we've done her proud with our achievements for Mount Waverley in this budget. Brentwood's $4.6 million is a part of a massive record investment of $1.8 billion in schools all around the state. And we understand the value of investing education as it's investing in our future generations. And I, as I've said before, come from a family of educators, my wife, my mother, and my mother-in-law all being fantastic teachers. 
I understand what $4.6 million means for a local school community. And it's not just about the classrooms, it's not just about the halls, it's about what they do after hours, it's about sharing those resources with the community. And another important initiative investing in is in the smiles of our students. So thanks to the Labor government, all Victorian public primary and secondary students will receive free dental care. And if you've seen those smile vans dropping down, rolling down the street, and if you've been there, you can't not see them. That orange is fantastic. Um, they are a great initiative, and they, this investment will save Victorian families around $400 a year per child in dental costs. Supporting the dental health of growing young Victorians and supporting the back pockets of Victorian families. How good is that? Seriously. So there's more though. TAFE and jobs. We're looking after students, young and old. With our promise to fund 30,000 new free TAFE training places, we promised to rescue TAFE, and we did. We've invested 1.3 billion into rebuilding our TAFE system after it was sort of let to slide ensuring students can get the skills they need for the jobs they want. Earlier this year, we were lucky enough to have the Premier out to Mount Waverley and I invited him to visit our Holmes Glen Waverley campus and see how great the free TAFE initiative has been for the students studying my electorate and Victoria wide. When meeting the certificate for in education support students, we asked who in the class was only able to study their course in 2019 because it was free and many of those in the class raised their hands. Because of our free TAFE rollout, rollout more than 25,000 students have enrolled in free TAFE courses, 92% more than this time last year. We're also seeing an increase in women studying male-dominated courses such as agriculture, building, uh, surveying, cyber security. Students over the age of 30 are making up 47% of our free TAFE enrolments, meaning people are given the opportunity to reskill and enter new careers. And over a quarter of our free TAFE courses are being studied in regional Victoria, boosting our great regions. This budget's historic investment in the skills sector of Victoria means that not only are we supporting Victorians in studying upskilling, but we're making sure they are supported in finding jobs. We're delivering $8.8 .8 million to expand Jobs Victoria, including the Jobs Victoria Employment Network to help even more disadvantaged job seekers find work with additional training and support. With the Labor government's major project skills guarantee, our promise that apprentices and trainees will make up at least 10% of the workforce on Victoria's major projects, we've created thousands of opportunities for apprentices. We understand that support is needed during their studies to ensure apprentices can finish their apprenticeship and gain a trade. And with all our major projects ongoing or coming up, I feel confident that Victorian apprentices will have many jobs to choose from. And I note that our suburban rail loop, which will cross the heart of our Mount Waverley district, uh, recently went to market for registrations of interest, a project that will create 20,000 jobs. Now, you'd think that was all we'd done in education, but it's not. There's more, and it's not a set of steak knives. For those wanting to go into early childhood educating or to update their qualifications, we're helping reduce financial barriers for students and encouraging enrolments. We've introduced early childhood education to the list of free TAFE courses. As an added benefit, this will support the Labor government's rollout of universally subsidised three-year-old kinder. Recognising the big job we have ahead of us in rolling out three-year-old kinder, I've been reaching out to all of my local kinders and preschools. From my experience sitting on preschool committees, I understand all the countless hours and dedication that goes into making sure our local preschools and kindergartens run smoothly. I've thoroughly enjoyed over the past few months meeting with my local preschools and kindergartens, and especially meeting with all the amazing educators who work there. It was important to me that I heard from these educators and how they were feeling about the upcoming changes and what changes need to be made on how things can currently run ahead of our rollout. I think all the hardworking educators who have taken time to speak with me and I thank them and I look forward to working closely with you and your committees in the coming years. The investment into three-year-old kinder is an investment into the education of our youngest Victorians. 
It is important that every child gets every opportunity to the best start in life. And I'm proud to be a part of a government delivering such an importantly crucial initiative. This year's budget also understands that with the introduction of more children in our kinders, we'll need to upgrade the kindergartens we currently have. $473 million has been allocated towards building, expanding and improving kindergarten and early childhood education facilities in preparation. And thanks to $882 million budget investment, we'll ensure that every three-year-old can access at least five hours per week of subsidised kinder by 2022, eventually increasing to 15 hours per week. Research shows how beneficial early childhood education is for children. I've seen it. I've had three kids going to three-year-old kinder and you can see the growth in that 12 months. It improves socialisation, speech skills, learning and development. Early child education sets kids up for the best start with their schooling and it's great to see that the Andrews Labor government's investment go beyond just investing in primary and secondary schools, but assisting children and their parents through childhood education. At the beginning of this year, I had the honour of opening the brand new playground at Highmount Kindergarten. And this was only possible with the Inclusive Kindergartens Facilities Grant of $114,000. In fact, last week we just, the member for Morty Alec and I, as Palsica Schools, we opened up Essex Heights as playgrounds. How great was it? I mean, it's great that kids come home and they play on their video games, but having them outside, learning in their environments and having an inclusive area for all to enjoy is just another aspect of the wonderful things that we do. So it's another example of that great work this government doing in early childhood space in understanding the importance of upgrading our facilities for our kids. So we move on to sports. And I'm very happy to share that this government is fulfilling one of the promises I took to the election and there weren't that many, to be fair, but $150,000 to fund the master plan for the redevelopment of Mount Waverley Reserve. We had such great state promises. I didn't need that many local ones, but this was one that was very important to me, and we got it. Our local sports club contributes so much to our local communities, encouraging health and fitness, creating lifelong friendships, and encourage, encourages getting involved in the local community. The three clubs who play on this reserve, the Waverley Blues Football and Netball Club, Mount Waverley Cricket Club and Mount Waverley Tennis Club, have all worked tirelessly to come together to make this master plan happen. It is clear to me that each of these clubs are passionate about giving their players the best and I'm proud to be able to help them deliver. The three clubs have also been working hard to grow their numbers, including the Waverley Blues, who now have under-14s, under-16s and senior women's football teams. I can't wait to see where all of the clubs go in the next four years. I want to acknowledge all of the club's presidents, uh, committee members, coaches, players, families and volunteers who have come together to make this important step possible. And of course, it would be remiss of me not to name the presidents who put in all the countless hours. So, to Stephen Putris of the Blues, David Crossman of the Cricket Club, and uh, Andrew Rydell, the past president of the Mount Waverley Tennis Club, thank you for all your time and uh, your shared vision for Mount Waverley. I can't wait to see it in its entirety. But it's not just about that area of Mount Waverley. The Glen Waverley Hawks, we also got them 50,000 for their, their scoreboard. And Graham, uh, Graham Fancy has been holding this job in the old scoreboard for many a long year in the cold, in the wet, putting up the numbers, now he doesn't have to. When this scoreboard, the electronic one comes in, he can sit there in a nice warm space. So I am hope Graham is pretty happy with that change. I'm pretty sure he is. So I'd like to give a shout out to the Glen Waverley Hawks senior captains, Mitchell Potts and the senior boys, Ben Sullivan and Dan Eason and Evan Pickering, for coming out when we announced the $50,000 for their scoreboard. I hope to see some good wins on the board for next year. This year's pretty well done, but they're, they're on and up, so we've got to watch out for them. Um, and also uh, a big shout out to Gary Hocking and all the guys on the committee. But it's not just about sports, and I'm running out of time. There is so much to this budget, I'm just not going to have time to get all to it. What have we got? We've got energy. We've got solar homes, fantastic project. We've got the suburban rail loop, which I'm a little bit excited because it's coming through us and it's going to be great. 
What else we got? Jordanville. We've got car parks in Jordanville. I'm running out of time. I'm having to skip through pages here. We've got 40 of them coming. This is too much. I'm just not going to get it all done. So in conclusion, Acting Speaker, I am proud to stand here and know that we're prioritising education to sports, to transport, to every ministry we've got in this place, and we're doing it and delivering.